Good day, Carlton Woods. I'm taking this brief opportunity to update you on the work done over the last five weeks by Tim Huber, his staff, and our vendor partners. This year, believing that a picture is worth a thousand words, over the next several minutes, you'll see video excerpts and still photos so you can actually see what these processes entail and have a good understanding of what all has been accomplished and what agronomic processes have been completed. To begin, we work from the greens out. June 1st and 2nd, we did our first core aerification with half inch hollow tines to a depth of four inches at two inch spacing. Following these processes, we top dress with sand and then drag mat the surfaces to fill in the holes. June 3rd through 5th, we began the grading process. This is a verticutting process. This machine has two millimeter saw blades spaced two inches apart, set to a depth of one inch, and then run over the entire green surface. The grading is a very aggressive and invasive process that removes thatch buildup and creates channels which are later filled with sand. These channels act almost like a mini French drain grid to move water and amendments throughout the surface. Adding all the sand also aids in firmness and smoothness. Following the grading, the surfaces are allowed to recover for 10 days. On June 16th and 17th, we did our second core aerification, again using half inch hollow tines to a depth of four inches at two inch spacing, followed by more top dressing and drag mat. After again approximately 10 days of recovery, our last process was the dry jack aerifier. This machine uses water to blast a half inch diameter hole to a depth of eight inches and then inject sand in the cavity. Following the dry eject, we began top dressing, mowing, and rolling to train the greens back to playing height and condition. All the above achieves about 20% subsurface organic exchange, removes 50% of the surface turf, and almost 100% of the thatch and unwanted organic material, ensuring we get moisture, air, and amendments throughout the root zone. Next, we move to fairways. Also on June 1st, we began the Coro verticutting process. This equipment is the big brother of the Graden used on the greens. The Coro has two millimeter saw blades at two inch spacing set to a depth of one and a half inches. This is a very slow but extremely valuable process. It took the first 10 days of closure to complete the Coro process on all fairways. Upon completion, it removes 70% of surface turf and 100% of the thatch. Following the Coro, we utilized our fairway spring rake to ensure we removed all the debris and subsurface particles removed by the Coro, followed, followed by a thorough turbine blowing, so we were starting with a truly clean and bare surface. This is followed by a nice 50 ton dusting of sand per fairway. This gets us ready for the deep tine aerification. June 16th through 18, our vendor partner arrived to complete fairway deep core aerification. They use one and a third inch hollow tine to a depth of seven inches. This removes a lot of subsurface, allowing for sand penetration and reconnects to our sand cap and also creates sand channels to connect to the Coro grid. The holes left behind can swallow a golf ball. The benefits of this process is again, creating a micro grid of sand channels leading to the large aerification chambers, which aids in drainage, firmness, smoothness, and our ability to get amendments into the root zone more easily. Next, we move to tees and approaches. These areas received a core aerification with half inch hollow tines to a depth of four inches in two directions to maximize subsurface removal. You've heard me mention sand dressing and sand dusting a fair amount previously. We purchased 1,500 tons of sand to utilize for top dressing at Nicholas during this closure window. This equates to 75 loads delivered 20 tons at a time. We staged this evenly at the clubhouse and agronomy so the travel time would be minimized. To disperse all of this sand required approximately 400 trips from sand pile to the end point on the course by our top dressing trailers, which carry three to four tons per trip. Close to three million pounds of sand was spread across tees, fairways, and greens over the last five weeks. In addition to our normal pruning and general cleanup, we scheduled numerous other major projects to be completed by the staff and outside vendors. Most notable is the construction of the five T's. 
These will prove to be tremendously beneficial on many fronts for years to come. These tea boxes were discussed and placed during a visit with Chris Cochran from Nicholas Design as part of the master planning visits. This was a great collaboration between designer, Tim Huber expressing the agronomy opinion, and Emile Asus discussing the desired playability aspects. It was an enjoyable session that yielded great results. 14 bunker removal, also identified as part of the Nicholas master plan. The board wisely identified components of the master plan that would have tremendous impact that could be done in advance of a more major renovation project on the Nicholas course. We have long been working the approach areas to one, four, and eight. We have tried to exchange organic matter and establish new sod through the years to not much success. We took the opportunity now to strip these areas, till in new amendments and material to aid in moisture retention to a depth of eight inches, and then applied new sod. We are confident these areas will perform better going forward because of this work. Hydroax on number 8T was a pet project this year. This piece of equipment can basically drive through a wooded area and pulverize anything with the diameter less than four inches. We contracted with a vendor who spent seven days removing debris and undergrowth, opening up our view of the reservoir from the teeing ground on the eighth hole. Now that the clearing work is mostly done, this should become a major focal point over the next several months as native turf reclaims the area. Lake bank reestablishment was completed on three, four, and five around our irrigation lake, also nine and 18, 12, 15, and 17. There is a specialty piece of equipment we brought in to accomplish this work and was a three day undertaking. As you enjoy your round, you will notice new trees and pine straw bed creation around the course. These areas add nice focal points on several holes and over time will back up significant trees. Our last invasive agronomic practice was completed on June 27th and the final sod was just laid on July 7th. Now it is simply a race to get everything rooted in and trained down to playing height and condition before reopening. As you return, it is important to know that we had a major well and intake failure simultaneously at Nicholas. The problem is partially repaired, allowing us to replenish irrigation water, but the lake that borders 345 is noticeably low still today. We now have the intake 100% repaired, which is our main source of water. The well located on number four will be repaired fully sometime over the winter. Other than the course, a couple other items to mention. Continuing the project in the men's locker room, we renovated the bar area. This project opens up and modernizes the look and feel of the area. With the exception of the granite, this entire project was completed by our in-house engineering and maintenance staff. I will specifically point out the staff carpenter, Kerry O'Dell. Kerry did all the detail carpentry on this bar project, and he is the same employee you have heard me praise in other reports, as he also made custom tables for our wine room at Fazio and the overlook and club view room at the Nicholas. He also maintains all wood surfaces in our a la carte dining areas and is a tremendously talented person. Lastly, I will ask your help in preserving our history. We have created areas in the clubhouse to catalog and maintain significant artifacts of the club, dating back to the announcement in 1998. I have the groundbreaking shovel from the Fazio Clubhouse. I have an original champagne glass used to toast the grand opening of the clubhouse and other interesting items. If you have a physical item and you're willing to part with it and can share the story with me, I would love to have it and add it to our collection. In closing, thank you for your support during these trying times. The COVID-19 pandemic has been difficult on everyone. We continue to advance, looking forward to our future. The course is getting stronger each day, and we can't wait to show off the work of Tim Huber and the staff. We will see you at the Carlton Woods Clubhouse and on the Nicholas Signature course on July 16th. Be well.